now. And we'll just go ahead and take the uh, same two points, 2, 1, and 5, negative 5. So we can go ahead and graph these points out, just like we did before. <coughs> we can even draw our triangle that we drew last time. So I've not told you what midpoint is. What is an intuitive idea of midpoint? So you see two points. What could be the midpoint? It's the middle point between the two points. Yep, that's exactly right. So it's the point that's right in the middle. So visually, let's just take a guess visually where it might be. I'll do my guess in blue. So I'd say somewhere in this area right here. So my graph's not perfect, so I'm just going to say somewhere in that area. It'll be along this dotted line right here. If we think way back to distances, the entire distance right here we computed before, it's basically half, half the way down there. So that's one way it's related to distance. But we don't really need to worry about distance to answer the question, where is this midpoint? So what are some ways that we could figure out the midpoint? Let's look at our x-coordinates first. So we have an x-coordinate of 2 and 5. What is the middle of 2 and 5? Oh, we have to use fractions 3 and a half, or also known as 7 halves. So the middle x-coordinate is the one between 2 and 5. Uh, and not just sort of between, but exactly between. So if I give you two numbers, how do you tell me the number that's right in the middle of the two numbers? <laughs> yep, so we can use, um, so we're definitely going to use end and start, and we, and we are going to divide. So what operation or what function can you apply to 2 and 5? This goes probably way back to middle school. The average. Average, right? Take two numbers, get their average. So add them up, cut it in half, and that'll tell you what is directly in between. So all we're going to do is average 2 and 5. So you add them up, divide by 2. So this is the average. And we can write down that formula. 2 plus 5 over 2 is 7 halves, which is 3.5 if you're a decimal person. Uh, I can take answers in decimal or fraction, it doesn't matter to me. So whatever works better for you, use that form. Alright, so we got the average or the middle x value is three and a half. How can we get the middle or the the middle y value? So how do we get the middle y value? Average two y values. Yeah, average two y values. So you got two y values, we're just going to find the one right in between. So the middle y value is the average of, so in this case, one and negative five. So 
So you might be worried a little bit. Ah, negative. That sounds a little scary. So if you've seen Star Wars, you know there is no try, there's only do. All you're going to do is average these two numbers together. It doesn't matter that one of them is negative. So how do you average them? The average 1 plus negative 5 over 2. And that's really 1 minus 5, which is minus 4 halves or minus 2. So you're just averaging those two numbers. If they were both negative, not a problem. Just you know, add them together. Same procedure no matter what to find the average. So our midpoint is these two coordinates added, uh, put together in a point. So our x was 3.5 and our y was negative 2. So there's our midpoint. And now we can accurately graph it. It's going to be right about there. My graph's a little off. And that's M. So that's how we get the middle point. You're just averaging x's, averaging y's. So we can write that formula down now. So the midpoint of, just like before, we start with two points, x1, y1, and x2, y2 is, and inside here, we're going to write the average. So we average the x's and average the y's. So if you like memorizing formulas or equations, this is a great one to mem uh, remember. If you're more of an intuitive person, then you want to think that the mi midpoint's the average of the x's and the y's. That would be the more intuitive way to think of it. Whichever the two ways works better for you. Now, if you're going to use the formula, I recommend every time you compute midpoint, write the formula down. It seems a little silly, but by the eighth or ninth time you write down, you probably would not need to write down the rest of the quarter, and you'll be OK. If you want to go with the intuition, just write the sentence down. I'm averaging the x and the y coordinates to get the midpoint. And do that seven or eight times, and you'll probably have that memorized as well. So now we're going to look at the midpoint of two points. So in this example, find negative 1, 2, and 7, 4. Now, whichever of the two ways you want to go about it, thinking of it as averages or just using the formula, they're exactly the same thing, just whatever works better for your memory. There is one negative, just be a little bit careful.
Are there any questions on getting 3-3 three, three or? Uh, so just make sure on the quiz, if I, if I want you to graph it, I'll say graph it in. So make sure you read the instructions really carefully. Uh, I'll, most of the time on quizzes, I ask you a few different parts in a, in a question. So I'd ask you, I'd give you two points and probably ask you for distance and midpoint and graph, uh, the two points and the midpoint as well. Uh, and I do that for a few reasons. A big one is uh, if you graph the two points and the midpoint, you'll probably be able to tell if your midpoint is at least reasonable. Uh, so I was actually wanting to check <coughs> because maybe I just memorized this wrong. Uh, maybe I just told you the midpoint incorrectly. And it's a good time if you want to close the window. Go for it. Uh, so to check, I mean, you could just look back through what you did. But if the first formula is wrong, looking back through is not going to be very helpful. Uh, so go ahead and graph the two points and the midpoint and see if it feels pretty accurate. So we're going to check by graphing. So this is a pretty rough sketch. My axes aren't even perpendicular, but at least you can see that it's pretty reasonable. And in here, you can even use a lot more intuition and say, oh, well, that's like 8, so half of that's 4. And you can just count over 4 off either side. So if you have a graph, you can do a lot of visual checking to see if you're, what you got is reasonable. So that's the end of 1.1. And now we're going to jump into 1.2. So this was a normal week where you didn't know about your quiz. Because I just finished 1.1, Thursday would be a good day for your 1.1 quiz. But I'm already telling you your quiz is Friday. So 1.2 is relations. Now, relations means a lot of things. It really means the way two entities, uh, how two entities uh, affect each other or, or how they interact. And so we're going to look at relations between x values and y values. So we'll start out with a definition here. So the graph of an equation is all points x comma y that satisfy the equation. So we're going to take this to be the definition of a graph of an equation. So what does it mean to satisfy an equation? So we'll look at what that means. Uh, so satisfying equations means makes it true. So it makes it equal. So we'll start with an example. Are these points, or which points are on the graph? So 
So the equation we're using <coughs> is x squared minus 1 equals y. And the points I want to check, 2, 3, 3, 4. So I want to know, is either of the points on? Are they both on the uh, graph, neither on the graph, or only one on the graph? All right, so what we're going to do, these are, of course, x, y values. So first one's x, second one's y. So we're going to check in the equation. So we're going to sub in 2 for x. So I have 2 squared minus 1 equals 3. Make sure you put x in where you see x, y in where you see y. So don't, if you flop the, you know, the 2, y for x, x for y, that would not be good. All right, 2 squared minus 1 equals 3. That's 4 minus 1 equals 3. And so that is a true equation. So we satisfy the equation. True, so our equation is satisfied. So this one is on the graph. Now most, most of you have only seen graph or only thought of graphs as actual plotted points on a graph. So you've seen lots of points plotted out, probably looks like a curve, and that was taken to be the graph. Uh, that's one representation with them drawn out. Uh, the actual definition is just the collection of all those points. So you could plot them out on some paper, or you could just say it's all the points that would satisfy this equation. All right, so I want you to check 3, 4 and tell me is 3, 4 on, or is 3, 4 not on? So does it satisfy, does it not satisfy? So you should get 8 equals 4. Does that feel satisfying? No. So not on the, so we got false. So equation is not satisfied. So I'll go ahead and cross that point out. So that point's not on the graph. So you, Hopefully you've graphed some, at least some equations by hand. What is a method of graphing if you can't use a calculator? And I asked you to graph x squared minus, you probably see it as y equals, and that's totally fine to write in the other order. So if I just asked you to graph and you couldn't use a calculator, what's a reasonable approach to take? So, so we definitely want to use points. So we're going to either pick x values and then figure out what y values go with them, or pick some y values and figure out what x values go with them. And it doesn't really matter which of the two you pick first, as long as you match x's with y's so the equation's true. This one I think will be easier to pick x's, so we're going to go ahead and just... Now, when I say pick x's, we're generally going to pick nice numbers close to zero. We're not going to try like 38,000 and then see what y value comes in with that. Uh, but our choice is very limited. As you can see, really any number you can think of, you could square it and subtract one. You may not want to, but any number you can think of, you could square it and then subtract one afterwards. So there's no reason. Uh, this graph is going to have x values of all x values from negative infinity to positive infinity. So we're just going to choose a very, very few x values that are close to zero, only because we like numbers, nice numbers close to zero. Uh, and this method, because we don't really, we're not using anything uh, intuitive about this particular equation, this is what I call the clueless method. When you don't know what you're doing, you're basically randomly picking some points, plotting them, and then trying to connect them with a smooth curve. So this is what we call, the, at least what I call the clueless method. So when you don't know what the graph's supposed to look like, you use this method. So 
the clueless method is plotting points. This is exactly what a calculator or a computer does. If you go on to uh, any type of graphing program, all it's going to do is just going to pick a whole lot more numbers than you have patience to pick. It's going to pick uh, 20,000 points and plot them all. They'll be so close, it's going to look like it's a continuous curve, even though it's just a, point, a bunch of points plotted out on your screen. Um, for assignments, are you going to tell us how many points you want us to plot, or quizzes, et cetera, that you want us to graph? Or is it kind of like, oh, uh, you know, do a round five, but you can do more or less? So I probably will never ask you to do the clueless method on a quiz. Oh. I don't have very much respect for it. <laughs> uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to learn what some of these graphs look like for about eight different functions, and then we're going to perform transformations. So it, this is basically the uh, x squared function with a vertical sh uh, shift. So what we're going to do is we're going to learn what the quadratic graph looks like so we won't be clueless anymore. So we're not going to start from like, uh, this is stuff, I don't know, I'll just plot some points. Like we'll say, ah, that's a quadratic graph, and I'm just going to shift it down one. So the idea is we're not going to be doing clueless graphs very long. But it's a good question. If there is a specific number of you know, something that I want you to check, then I'll, I'll tell you, usually. All right, so we're going to plot points. And we're going to pick x coordinates. Let's start near 0. We don't have too much time, so we'll just plot with those five x values. Again, I just chose them because they're easy, relatively easy for our brains to process. So we're just squaring them, subtracting 1. So we got 2 squared is 4 minus 1 is 3. Negative 1 squared is 1 minus 1, which is 0. 0 squared, 0 minus 1 is negative 1. So that's written their x values, uh, y values, and then writing it as points, negative 2, 3, negative 1, 0, 0, negative 1, 1, 0, 2, 3. You don't have to write the points column down, because you have all that information if you know where to look. But I just like to, what I don't want you to do is mix those two that I circled together, so being off a little bit. Because if you're looking at graph, looking back at your table, looking at your graph, your eyes might wander a little bit. And now we're going to plot these five points out, just like we plotted before. And <clears throat> when you're doing the clueless method, when you connect them together, try not to, don't write this down in green. This is a kind of an ugly way to connect them. If you're playing connect the dots, you want to connect them with a smooth curve if you can. So our smooth curve, you want to try to do it in one shot if you can. That's not too great, but a little bit better. It does keep going up in both directions. So there is our graph.